in Orlando. On the left, we have Five Color Haven. Is that the, is that the Haven that uh, Evan and I both said in our set review that it was just absolutely unplayable? Verdant Haven? Yes, that's it. Four of them. All right, well, let's, let's see. Uh, Sylvan Primordial. Now, what are we blowing up with Sylvan Primordial? What does that card actually do? In well, that one can blow up a non-creature permanent, I'm fairly sure. So yes. it can kill all non-creature permanents and it uh, does something else. I think it lets you search for a land, too. I've not actually no, got to cast I, this I one off the limited. No, I don't think it lets you search for land. I'm pretty sure. Oh, oh it, it does. Oh, you search for a forest. Take you search that. for a forest and kill something? Yeah. Kill that is so cool. And we have Josh Martinez on our right. Boring old Josh with his blue-white-red flash deck. This is very akin, again, to the Jonathan Job school of thought here that we saw last week, and a lot of counter magic with Essence Scatters, counter fluxes, two of each of those in the main deck. He has two rewinds as well, and then he has three Restoration Angels, three Augur Bulls, oh three Snapcaster, and two Aurelias. So his deck is not all that exciting, but as you have your hands covering your mouth right now, what's exciting you? All right, there's two amazing things about this deck. One is he's running a Shimmer Grotto. He is my homeboy. I'm going to give Chris a hug, so after we're done with this match, you, I might disappear for a couple minutes. Okay. I'm going to give him a hug. He's the only other person that respects that card, and I respect that card. Um, but he has four Abundant Growths in his sideboard. Excuse me? <laughs> to go with his Sphere of Safety oh, and his wow. Slaughter Games. He's getting down. Yeah. He's getting dirty. All right, Glenn, good work. Yes, congratulations, sir. Glenjamin Jones, as we're going to see a thing right. twice here from Josh on the end step. He'll draw a card. He's going to draw another one here. Sacred Foundry, the draw there. We're gonna see a sulfur falls and so passing can, the turn back. So he can think once again. He also does have a, a couple copies of counterflex in his hand. We are just getting an update here that Chris on the left did take a mulligan of six. He looks to be doing just fine. We're gonna see a verdant haven here on the forest. What? What does this do? And <laughs> as he's gonna let Josh read it, we're gonna pull up on the screen for you guys. As Brad and Evan did call this unplayable, to that I say, ha! Well, he still has to win, and I think he will, because <laughs> this probably is a take good match. that! Matchup. Limited, I, would, I, I want to call it a limit all-star, but I don't even know if that's true, as we are going to see a ground seal here as well, so it's going to make those Snapcaster Mages look a little bit worse. See, I don't get why he's playing Verdant Haven and ground seal. I guess he's just running one. I want more spheres in the sideboard, man. You want to feel safe? Yeah, all right, so that got counterflux. He's like, no, I like my Snapcaster Mages. Those are my homeboys. We're playing with those. I want something to do with those with those Snapcaster Mages, so counterflux will take care of the ground seal. We're going to see Josh play a Sacred Foundry, and he's just going to pass the turn back. Now, he has another Counterflux in his hand for this turn. We can both agree we're not Blue Mages, but do you How think... How dare you? Do you think Counterflux... All right, Staff of Nin is a big game. Yeah, that's going to be But we do have another Counterflux. Do you think Counterflux is better right now than Dissipate? I think Dissipate feels better against the Reanimator decks than the Counterflux does in the Mirror Matches. I think that Dissipate is a much more important card right now. We saw this actually last weekend as well when Jonathan Joe was playing against Will Craddock in the finals. Where, you know, he did draw two copies of Counterflux, and had those been Dissipates, he would have certainly won game one. Dude, as he did a uh, as he did a Dissipate plus Snapcaster Dissipate, or he did a Counterflux and Snapcaster Counterflux, and then Barrel Rights was just turned on, mm -hmm. and then just ended up winning the game. So I think that uh, that's a big deal, as we're going to see a Think Twice get flashback here. Josh increasing the velocity of his deck right now, so that he can hit his land drops, find his relevant cards to try to get this game over with, as he plays Glacial Fortress and passes the turn and, back. And, and that Lighthouse is going to give him a lot of card selection as Chris is just off the top trying to find Sixes Revelation, trying to find Sylvan Primordial, trying to find his last Staff of Nin. And he does just play a Hall of Fountain Pass to the turn back. We're going to see Josh activate the Desolate Lighthouse. A card we'll bring up on screen for you guys. One of those Innistrad lands that, uh, you know, they're all pretty good lands outside of maybe the Grim Backwoods. I don't want to talk, I don't want to talk too much trash about that card, but it is yeah. kind of a stinker. Um, but yeah, I, I think when we first saw Desolate Lighthouse, Brad, I thought this is a card that we thought would see a little bit more play than it has. Well, especially it quite what, powerful. what Christian Calcano got to do with that thing at GP Minneapolis. Yeah, buddy. Uh, the reason that he met me in the finals of that tournament was because he had one bonfire and one lighthouse in his deck. He drew lighthouse, activated it during his opponent's turn, hit bonfire, killed his opponent's board, and then won the game. It's a tough way to go out. Yeah, and then, and then smashed me too. <laughs> <laughs> Beat Raptor twice in that tournament. I think he's the only person to ever hold that title. Beat Josh R. Layton twice in the tournament. Twice. That can't be done. I don't believe it. No, I, I agree. Because you're going to see Josh take a look at one of those other Innistrad lands, the Alchemist Refuge, a card that uh, Reed Duke used to a lot of success. That's yes. for darn sure, playing the old band control deck, being able to give your non-land cards flash until end of turn. He popularized that. But, yeah, this is going to be a tough one for Chris now. Josh already has a counter spell and a Snapcaster Mage with the Lighthouse to get rid of all those removal spells, waiting to find a Sphinx's Revelation. All right, there it is. There is the Sylvan Primordial card that we are bringing up on the screen now, for you guys. In a deck with, Josh is going to take a In a, a look. deck with Chromatic Lantern, Verdant Haven, Farseek, don't you just run four 
uh, caverns. Like, isn't this a card you just want to resolve? You sort of push this through from Evil yeah. Titan style. It's hard to disagree with you, and it is on the stack right now, so we'll see if Josh even cares about this, if he's going to cast the Rewind, if he's going to Snapcaster Mage, what route is he going to take? Oh, it so if like you don't actually get to destroy a permanent, you don't get the forest? That's correct. Aww. Sad Primordial. Yeah, very sad. He looks sad in the graveyard. And so we're going to see Counterflux take care of that. You can, you can always you hit can, a land? Well, you can destroy a land with it. Well, no, no, no. But if somebody like did something with destroying that land or got that land out of the way, yeah. If he dazed the non-spell on the stack, ah, uh, yes, a little touch of legacy in there. Snapcaster Mage is coming across for two. Gonna knock Chris down to twenty. Negate that verdant haven life gain. See, it's terrible. <laughs> well, we'll see if Josh is gonna cast the Augur of Volus. It's in his hand, and he is. So Augur of Volus, a, a card that last weekend put three cards on the bottom every single time. And it's off to a nice start this week as well. <laughs> That's three straight to the bottom. I don't like the swings that Blitz has, but I don't get how those blue right players like the swings of the Augur. I can't stand it. Yeah. I've only played I've only played Augur Bolas once in my life, and every time I put three cards to the bottom, I wanted to beat somebody uh, off. I've had matches where Oh, he shocked himself. I'm oh is he Maybe a little refuge action? We're gonna get a refuge action. I don't know which refuge card. Oh no, yeah, he can terminus. He's going to try to terminate us. So here come these guys. We're going to see Optimus Refuge be activated and now a Ignoring terminus. his opponent's ability of stifle. No fear. No fear of the stifle. We'll see if Josh cares about this. Is he does have a rewind in his hand. And he said, all right, Snapcaster Mage and Augur can't go to the bottom along with those three cards from the Augur as well, right where they belong. No, I. he's like, I have a fistful of cards. I think this game I'm going to kill you with the, uh, or does he not even have it? Which oh, card yeah. are you looking for? Okay, never mind. Yeah, I forgot. He doesn't have any board striker, so he does not have the uh, He's going Aurelius fire. style, as Jonathan Job did last week, and he's also going to cast the first half of a Think Twice here. And he's going to draw exactly that, Aurelia the War Leader. And we'll see if he wants to pull the trigger on this on this turn or just kind of set up some more and maybe activate those lighthouses and all that good stuff. And we're going to see Josh cycle an Azorius charm here. He draws a steam vents off of that. Right, Untap so upkeep. Draw stuff will reveal an island. Yeah, and because of uh, his his fear of Sphinx's Revelation and the uh, Refuge, he's not going to be using that Desolate Lighthouse. He's just going to keep drawing cards. Yeah, and he is going to play rather conservative here, as Chris does actually have a Sphinx's Revelation in his hand. Makes you wonder if Josh identified that this deck does have that, as he's going to flash back a thing twice here on Chris's end step, drawn well, to a Hollow Fountain. If I, if I had to guess what Josh is thinking, he's like, my opponent just played Sylvan Primordial. I'm not tapping out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm I have not no this. idea what this guy could do to me. I'm not casting this really until I feel that it is super safe to be able to do so. And yes. You see him tapping four mana right now. Make it five. Make it six. So he is representing the rewind right now. And we are going to see, as Josh does, check his mana very quickly. The most powerful 3-4 ever printed. Now, that's a bold claim. I need to think of some 3-4s in my head right now. But Serenip Ifrit. Stirring Wildwood. St st that's a land, sir. That's a 3-4. And your brush hopper would maybe like to have a word with you. And a, what? Yeah, that's right. Supreme verdict through the old Alchemist Refuge. You can have rewind all you want, Josh, but that thing is going bye bye. So you see, Alchemist Refuge actually playing a pretty important role in this game as Chris is going to untap and draw. You see two Thrag copies Tusk. of Terminus in his hand. He does draw a Thrag Tusk. He has a Sphinx of Revelation as well. And he has no reason here to move on Josh's main, or, uh, to move on his own main thing. Yes. Now, I feel like this is going to be one of those crucial turns, like if he lets that, like if he counters the Strike Tusk or not. Now, I'm assuming he's not going to, but sometimes players just get annoyed and they're like, oh, whatever. I'll counter it. You see Josh move through his hand here. See if he cares about it. And he says, no, that's fine. You can go to 25 and have a 5-3. I can take care of that eventually. Yeah, he, I mean, he does have the Revelation in hand. And so in for 5 from Strike Tusk. So Josh's life total he's going to begin to use as a resource here. Going to move down to 15 on a quote-unquote three-turn clock. He's actually down to 23 here, as we did miss oh, okay. a shock land point of damage. But our life totals are correct now, as Josh does draw a Restoration Angel for the turn. Oh, no, for the light, for light for the end of yeah. The end of turn draw step. So Josh will discard a Pillar of Flame, and you're going to see if he's going to pull the trigger on anything this turn. As he does have an Azorius Charm that he can cycle, he can also just play a Restoration Angel. Won't get a lot of value or anything, but it can just put a 3-4 on the battlefield. 
but he's going to elect not to. He draws draw a sulfur falls and does just pass the turn back. So playing very conservatively right now. Yeah, is this I something that you do agree with? I do agree with this because your opponent, uh, well, and now now he just ripped back to back threat tusks, which is really powerful. But you do have the Sphinx's Rev. You don't know what's in your opponent's deck, and you do have the rewind. Like, I don't mind taking time here. Like, this turn you can pull the trigger for five cards and keep rewind up, and that's plenty of cards. You don't need to draw nine right now. Um, all you really want to do is try to find more, like, like um, ways to take over the game. But, yeah, he doesn't have a ton of pressure points. Ooh. What do we just do? Bonfire of the Damned off of the top here for Chris. So... Now, you know, Josh was using his life total as a resource, playing very cautiously, playing very conservatively, and this is going to force Josh to actually finally do something, make a yeah. move, use that rewind, which he's going to do on that bonfire of the dam being miracled, and now here come the Thrag Tusk. So is Josh come from moving down to five life and well, then maybe and blowing up. that revelation Yeah, back nine? up to 14. Yeah, <laughs> I think he probably is. Yeah, I think you're okay with that. And then you'd spend half of your mana next turn in, like, four cars just, you know, four for two in yourself on the three tusks. So you're going to see him tap all that mana. So you've done this before, right? What's that? Done this, like, this Sphinx for, like, a no. million cards. No, no. Never once? My goal is to never do it. Yo, you, okay, I was with you, and then I played f and I just played blue-white-red because I had it. And you just have to do this once. It feels so good to go rev for five, rev for ten, snap rev for seven. See, I get no enjoyment out of that, honestly. So for, I'm a weird guy. I don't, you know, drawing a bunch of cards, gaining a bunch of life, and making it that my opponent can't win. I, I agree. Not enjoyable what, at all. Well, what, what's enjoyable to you? I really like to eke out some difficult wins with a linear. But that's what I mean. Like deck. I agree, and you'll you'll take comfort in this. I promise you. The most card drawing I'll do, Brad. I like to suspend Aeon Chronicler. Back in the day, the 2000, maybe like 2007, 2008 days. Dude, that's about the only X-Blue spell I'm going to play. That's when I went Moto Rich. Me too. Yeah, with with, with uh, Times for Block. Yeah, Solar I couldn't, Flare, baby. I couldn't lose Limited, Block, Standard. Like. No, that's the only, that's the way that, you know, a lot of cards I'll draw. But I'll, I'll draw a second card a turn. I'm okay with that. But drawing like seven cards in one turn, eh, that's for some people. Not for me. <laughs> it's not for me. Yeah. I like the fairway. I like the arena way. That's right. As we're going to see Josh tap some man on his main phase here, we'll see what he's going to set up. As Chris says, man, the world's your oyster. Do your worst. I'm tapped out. Yeah. You can see Josh is just looking at the board state. He wants to get life totals correct, all that good stuff. More cards in hand than in deck. <laughs> yeah. We see him organizing his lands here. So we're probably going to see at least one Supreme Party if he casts this turn. Not sure all of the contents of Josh's hand. As you see, he does have a metric ton of cards over there. Yeah. So now it's all about, you know, just kind of stabilizing, get those Thraktos off the board, and all that good stuff here. So Who has to stabilize? Well, I mean, they're, uh, and we are getting a radio in here. The, our, our spotter and our judge there are just checking something, so the game is going to be on a momentary pause. But as far as stabilization is concerned, um, I mean, Josh is, mm -hmm. Josh is behind on the board. Obviously, he has more <laughs> cards and all that stuff, but he is, quote, unquote, behind on the board. So he does want to not be behind on the true. board. But if he does sacrifice one-fifth of his hand, he will deal with two Thraktos successfully. That is true. <laughs> that is true. So Thraktos can be a pain in the butt to deal with, but Josh does have the necessary resources to be able to, be able to do that. But you Do know, you have four spears? Well, actually, I think I do. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, have all, I have all of the spears. So you see Josh reorganizing all his land here. Put, Putting his blue red lands together, his white blue lands together. Keeping and, you know, it organized. Yeah, just wants to know what he has access to. Doesn't want to make a, a blunder if he doesn't need to. So let's I'm, count, I'm let's see if we okay find five this. of a land. Let's yeah, just see if we can. I see, can I see seven sulfur falls. Unbelievable. We can actually just like run. Uh, what is my favorite game is the commentator DQ or the commentator game of us. It's like, is his lands correct? I lost. I got a game loss for this once because I named. The, I put the wrong card in my sideboard. Oops. I said the wrong card or like I wrote you the wrong card. The commentator's out. like, eh, that's not that. Hey, gotta be careful. <laughs> gotta be careful. We had somebody do it on one of the shows I've done. Yeah. Uh, he had island written down on his deck list, and it was a snow-covered island. Do we know how many cards were in Christmas? Season? Do we have any cards were in Christmas? I mean, season? I just remember Sphinx's Rev Terminus Terminus. Yeah, I don't. Uh, and yeah. then I thought he just like drew double threat tusk and the miracle the bonfire. Yeah, that's all I recall as well. So, 
I don't think a guy playing five color Haven is going to try to draw extras. I'm with you. Yeah, like, I'm with you. <laughs> it might be Jund, right? <laughs> like, yeah, he's gonna play. He's just gonna sit there and play an honest game. Yeah. Looks like we're all good to go. We've got the green light, and it is go time back here during round three, game one, Star City Games Open Series here in Orlando. Supreme Verdict going to take care of the front half of those Thrag Tusks. Beast Tokens will be joining us in just a moment here. Are they me? They are not you. They are uh, dice. Uh, Unless you are dice all of a sudden. I don't think so. I might be dice with sleeves, though. And I promise in a moment we're going to get real Beast Tokens out there so we can have an accurate game state for you, unless Josh is going to take care of those right away. I Wait, so we don't use my tokens for beasts? No, we do not. This is this is a. I am I'm so mad right now. It's not something we want you to take personal. But I'm going but, to actually take that personal issue. You, you're taking it personally. <laughs> yeah. And there are beast tokens that are not Brad Nelson in the house. Oh no, those are mine. Oh, are those you? Yeah, that's. I, I, I get back when easily. I didn't shave. Oh, okay. I get yeah. I get confused easily. Yeah. And by shave, you mean your entire body or just your face? Or? <laughs> well, I do have clothes on. We can't really discuss <laughs> this. <laughs> And thank God for that, as we are going to see <laughs> Searing Spear take care of the Beast Token. I think we might see a little Snapcaster Mage action here. Maybe not. We'll see exactly what Josh wants to do. Again, using his life total as a resource and using those extra cards in his hand as well as he's organizing it's such a what tough he wants to discard. First, first world problems, my friend. What? Ah, I had to discard so many cards. I know. I know. See, this, one of the things about the Bullet Red Flash deck, and, and Jonathan Jobs match in his quarterfinals, Particularly, game two of the quarterfinals last weekend is a, or of the semifinals, excuse me, was a perfect re, perfect example of using your life total as a resource. Many turns of the game with the Blood Red Flash deck, Brad, he was at one life, was able to, you know, not go to zero, obviously, and won a game that was very drawn out. And I think that's one of the things that the blue-white red deck does very well. You know, it just does have to use its life total as a resource so it can get all of those cards yeah. out of its hand and eventually win the game. I, I, I want to take one quick note that after Josh. Sphinx for nine and drew a card, so ten total cards went into his hand. He went to his discard phase, discarded only one land, and has none in hand. That's kind of insane. Yeah. Because we're going to see Restoration Angel here look to jump the beast. I do not like that. This is an opening. This is a big opening because I do not think he has a counter spell. I think he should have just taken it so he could hold up a counter magic. I think this is the turn where Chris is like, eh, I just have to go for it. Yeah, does he go for the revelation here? He, I mean, yeah. He is going to tap a bunch of mana. And now we've got a game. It's time for more magic. Yeah, that was a big blunder. I think you just take it, go to 11, you have seven cards in hand, you hold up the counter spell. Yeah, be able to counter that, counter flux that revelation. I find most of the games in this, the only way that, that Blue White Red loses these games is when they play poorly when they're ahead. Now that's like one of the biggest things that I'm that, that players should be concerned about when they're getting back into, or getting into competitive magic. A lot of times you'll play very tight when you're behind because you you have limited options, but when you have a lot of options, that's actually when you need to learn to play the best magic you can. Because right there, that was just a blunder. Oh, I'm way ahead, I feel good, I've got all these cards, and all of a sudden we've got a game again. So Josh is going to untap, he's going to draw, probably going to start this turn with an attack with Restoration Angel. It's going to knock Chris down to 32, so a long way to go here. As you see Essence Scatter in Josh's hand among a couple copies of Restoration Angels, he's got Azorius Charms. So he's got some ways to increase the velocity in the stack and a little bit of counter magic, but one card you do see in Chris's hand, Brad, I believe... Is a Shimmering Grotto. Is a Shimmering Grotto. Shimmering Grotto! Now, the reason that I like this card, some people at home are like, oh, oh man, I've been playing like these Blitz and these Junk decks from Brad, but I don't have premium. This is actually how he sounds. Yep. But like the reason I liked it was back in the Reanimator decks with Summer Stage, it let your Avacyn's Pilgrims tap for colored mana, which was important. It was a fixer that also got to filter through Avacyn's mana, because like there's not a lot of things you can do with that Pilgrim mana. Sure. Makes sense. It is a, a card when you when there are, you know, the Gilded Gates legal and all these dual lands yeah. and your M uh, your M twelve lands or what have you. There's so much color fixing available that people would wonder why on earth why I play Shimmering Grotto, but you know, there are some things associated to it that do make it worth yeah. worth actually playing. As we are going to see so Restoration, it'll come across. Flashing and a Verdant Halo. <laughs> this is so beautiful. Oh my god, I love it. <laughs> Brad can barely control his excitement, and now we are going to be casting a Terminus as well. So down goes Restoration Angel, and plus two life there for Chris. So that is awesome. That is that is not bad. Yeah. That is not bad. I have to give it to you. <laughs> for the Mad XL, oh. Beautiful. Now, post-combat, we'll see Azorius Charm cycle here. It's going to draw Josh a Clifftop Retreat. He's going to play his land, and he's going to say go. So, seven cards here. 
and a bevy of options. But he does have to whittle away at those 37 life points as Chris is going to draw a card. He draws a Sylvan Primordial. How good would Cavernous Souls be in this deck? It would be very good. That's actually what I thought the Shimmering Grottle was there for a second. Yeah. No, there's no Cavernous Souls in his list. He has one um, Refuge and one Wolf Run and three Drown three drown Yards. He's got a couple Colorless Slams in his deck. Let's, uh, you know how good that card's going to be in a couple turns here? Yeah, if he's able to find one, he can start to accelerate the... Uh, the clock start start attacking Josh's deck instead of his life. There total. might be more to this deck than we thought. That's true. Verdant Haven. Look at how this game's Verdant playing Haven, out. Verdant Haven, the straw that stirs the drink, as Patrick Sullivan would say. We also have four chromatic lanterns that do a little, you know the same business in the same the same stirring. Yeah. As Josh is going to activate the Desolate Lighthouse here on the end step, he's going to discard Nest and scatter. Uh oh, that is seems cycle to Zorius charm here. He's going to draw a new Augur of Bolas. I do like Refuge against... I mean, this deck is not Flash anymore, right? It's not really. It's just the name we call it. Yeah, it's just kind of what, it, it, it's, kind of what it's deemed. As we're going to see Augur of Bolas. He's going to put three more to the bottom. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, no, I see a spear. spear. But I do love that the, the five-color deck on the left has more capabilities of flashing things in than the Flash deck. Yes. <laughs> and it's gotten to that point where this is more of a blue-white-red main phase uh, mid-range deck. Yeah. We're going to see Alchemist Refuge be activated here. And there is our Sylvan Primordial trying to come down on the end step. Josh is like, why did I discard that scatter? Yeah, I kind of wish I had that scatter. And there's a Primordial on the oh, screen for you guys. One. But a second scatter here from Josh will take care of that. And now we're going to see a Farseek as well. Remember that the Alchemist Refuge just lets you play multiple spells. They all get flashed. Yeah, for the rest of the turn. And again, this is a card that you saw Reed Duke have a ton of success with. Kind of innovated by Andrew Cuneo. Cuneo, a lover of do-nothing control decks that are based around I feel know, like the Wrath of God and blue cards. I feel like the first time this ever saw play was Travis Wu, wasn't it? That's likely. This in, is a very in, Travis Wu card. Yeah, in uh, Crater Fire Wolf Thrag <laughs> stuff things. Yes. yes. <laughs> that's, yes that's, the, the, that's the title? That is the exact deck name. Yes. yes. I think, was, I think this deck was called Omni Thragdor. No, Omni Tusk Thrag Fire. Ah, yes. All right, my apologies. It, yeah. I should have known better. Yeah, I know. Stupid, stupid. <laughs> As Chris is going to untap and draw here, you see another Farseek in his hand and, and you know, a couple of spells over there. Restoration Angel. As Josh spear. is going to spear upstairs. Brought at least one spear with him. Yeah, he, get, he gets a little bit less than 10% uh, of his life total there. Oh, Omni Door Thrag Fire, yeah. Everyone knows that. So oh, yeah, everyone does. Common question. Might be a trivia question later today, so keep that uh, keep that on the top of your mind. <laughs> we try to ask easy ones. That'll be a little bit more difficult because Josh is going to serve it up with the Augur of Bolas. And Chris says, all right, I'll go to 30. I don't mind. And Josh is just going to pass the turn back with the, you know, Sandcaster right. Mage, Restoration Angels, access to some counter spells in the graveyard, and we're going to see a Chromatic Lantern here. We're going to see another Chromatic I don't know, what's, what's he doing out of the graveyard? Oh, searching the graveyard, interesting. Is it, is it just a ploy? I don't think so. What is What does he have for a graveyard card? He doesn't have a graveyard card. He's just bluffing. Far seek. Oh, he's checking to make sure he has lands? Because right. he does have a, 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 an abnormal amount of force in his deck. He only has one, two, three, four, five, six. He only has seven things to get with Far seek. Okay. Well, certainly making sure as he does uh, search for a temple garden there. And see if he's going to play anything on the end step. He does have a restoration in his hand, does Chris. I, I, I would rather wait for the third Sylvan or something. I don't know. I don't think I don't think I would play the resto because it's. I don't think Chris is going to try to aggro him out. I think he wants to try to find that drown yard. That Josh is going to be like, really? Yeah. <laughs> like, you, you have these? <laughs> well, Chris is going to... Oh, and I think Josh is... They're, they're, they're probably starting to talk about time. Yeah. Chris is going to take a draw step, and he's just going to pass the turn back. And Josh is going to cast a Snapcaster Mage. And he's going to Steering Spear upstairs. So Josh is trying to get this game over with pretty quickly. Yeah. And again, because and he, he knows have... the strength of Supreme Verdict uh, Alchemist Refuge. That's, that's the reason. And again, he does have Restoration Angels in his hand. So, you know, you see him spearing Chris here. It might look a little bit dubious, but because he can cast Restoration Angel and blink a counter spell, he's actually okay. You see he's going to cast Restoration Angel right I, now. I think this is a good turn to pull the trigger. Getting a little bit aggressive here is Martinez. Yeah. I want him to pull the trigger right now. 
you want to see a refuge push through that supreme verdict? In response. You know, he's just going to... So, he's going to let that resolve. He's going to let the Serious Square go upstairs. Chris going to go down to 24. Josh is going to untap. He's going to draw. And he's going to send on in. Yeah, see, it just cost him three life. So you're going to see a refuge activation. Bait out a counter spell with a terminus. I don't mind that. Yeah, as long as he has enough mana, that's, not, yeah. that's, that's plenty good. Yeah, he's just going to go terminus. That if it gets countered, then he got him to counter a terminus. Yeah. And then we just get to supreme verdict. So here is what Brad predicted. He's going to lead off with the terminus, and Josh is all right. That's fine. He's like, I don't have cards. Yeah. <laughs> And he's like, oh yeah, that. it's important now. <laughs> I love how like the first ten turns you're just like, yeah, put them at the bottom of your deck. The second ten turns you're like, <laughs> yeah, you're trying how to do I stack. Yeah, these you're trying correctly. to figure out where they are. Yeah, yeah everything. <laughs> how many cards do I have left in my deck? So this is gonna be the third last draw. And there's the drown yard. Ah uh, yes. Sweet, beautiful drown yard. Josh is just going that cannot. Be. Can we see Josh's face real quick? Oh man, I would. Yeah. He does not look happy. A little, a little agony. sick. It's been on a boat for a while. Seems a little seasick. <laughs> so now we are going to see the grotto get tapped along with some other lands here. There's your drowning activation. There goes Aurelia. So that one's gone. What is that other card? It's a promo. Is that the Restoration Angel promo? I believe it is, okay. yes. I'm really bad at promos. I was bad at them. I've gotten quite good at them. Yeah. <laughs> week in, week out. Yes. As we are going to see Azoria's Charm get cycled here. Josh taking through his deck a little bit. Rewind the draw step. See if he ever wants to cash in that Sphinx's Revelation that he does have in his hand. Again, it doesn't have to be a huge... Re it doesn't have to be a you know, Revelation for nine. No. It can be a mini Revelation. With Rewind to protect it. But he's, gonna not, he's not going to do that yet. He's going to draw a Holopon for the turn. I mean, it's tough. I mean, he does not have many cards left in his library. This game has been going for a very long time. Uh, his opponent has snap still not. Mage. Pillar, Pillar of going upstairs. So he's trying to work on that life total. This just this reminds me of like that, and I, I thought it was going to go the other way, but this is like the, the, the old poster with the cat just hanging onto the tree. Yeah. Like I thought Josh was just going to make a heyday with Chris, but this is this is impressive. And I, it all came down to that turn that Chris got to rev. If he did yep. not get that rev, this game was all but over. But a little bit greedy, getting blocking that Thrag Tusk. Um, just play tight. That's that's all you can say about situations like this. And so one of the things that you normally see in these blood red flash decks, and very akin to the Pro Tour Montreal list that Jerry Thompson made the top eight with, is you saw the Boros Reckoner Harvest Fire combo, and it gave you that sense of inevitability. When a game went long like this, you know you could you could find you know your Boros Reckoner, your your Harvest Fire, and be able to combo to deal a large amount of damage. Twenty two was nothing at that point. Yeah. With the updates to this list, and you know, Jonathan Joe played this list in the top four last weekend when we were in Kansas City, and you see Josh playing it now, starting off 2-0 in this tournament, what you don't find is that combo of Harvest yeah. Fire and Boris Reckoner, and, and you kind of see where it kind of hurts now yeah. not to have it. Well, I don't really understand how this this version came to be. I don't know what it's better against. Um, like, I don't know the advantages to playing it. I, I honestly don't. It really is a fine magic card, and it's good, but like Boris Reckoner... Is one of the most oh wow bond uh, we got another bonfire because we do see a miracle bonfire here but that is going to be rewound here by Josh so he gets to put it back on top of his library not quite that's not how it works not quite no it's not memory lapse thank goodness because that card's miserable to play against so do you bonfire lethal or do you keep on that drown yard and do both oh well Since I mean he bonfired he bonfired it all the way up I feel like that might have been a mistake unless it was lethal and I I don't I don't know if it was lethal. X was 15. So yeah, it was X, a X was 15, so it was a lethal bonfire, yes. As we're going to see a Sphinx of Revelation here from Josh, he's going to draw a couple of cards here on the end step. Probably just hope to find a little bit more counter magic to solidify this game and Sphinx Spear is going to go upstairs. Spear. So it's going to knock Chris down to 19. No Boros Charms, right? No Boros Charms here in the main deck and taking like, the sideboard, not going to find any there either. So Now, did he put an Aurelia on the bottom? No, both of them are gone. Yeah, both are in the graveyard. Yeah. One was milled via Nathalia Drown Yard, another one died via Supreme Verdict, I believe. As Chris yeah, does draw a here. forest. And Chris says, I want to know how many cards are left in your deck. Because I think I have to try to get you with the Fire Drown Yard. And there are not very many. We'll get a count here from our spotter at the table to see exactly how many there are. It looked like, looked like we were underneath 10, Brad. Yeah, it was underneath 10, and we have two verdicts. We almost have, we have, a, oh yeah, we have Fog, 
Attack Fog Mill, Attack Fog Mill, Mill. So this game's wrapped up unless Josh can find 14 points of burn uh, in the next couple turns. So here come the Restoration Angel. You're going to see an Alchemist Refuge activation. You are going to see a Supreme Verdict take care of these guys. So away those go. Josh does just pass the turn back. You're going to see Nefalia Drawn Yard activation here from Chris. Going to turn over three cards. That drops him down to five cards. You see Josh counting his library. And Josh might come to the conclusion I think we're coming to. And he does yes. pack it up as he realizes he cannot do the last 14 points of damage. <laughs> so Chris Galliano does win game one with the Brewers Brew. Woo, with the Havens. Five color Haven up a game. Yeah, and, and his sideboard I think gets very good. Um, because we get Abundant Girls just to help cycle through the more powerful spells, get through the deck a little bit. I don't know if he boards it in, but I'm pretty sure since he does get Slaughter Games, and Slaughter Games is going to be huge in this matchup. You get to take away Josh's Sphinx's Revelations. The second one will be able to take the Aurelias that he's already seen. He didn't see any Boris Reckoners, so he knows not to play around that. But being able to fight against your opponent's counter magic using that, you know, you can strip any of the counter magic to resolve your big spells. Uh, we also have two Syncopates that'll probably come in as well um, for the slower spells like Bonfire and things like that. What, what do you think Josh is doing over here? As far as what Josh wants to accomplish here, I mean, he's just going to want to board, and this is a very control-and-control -control matchup. Um, so, you know, cards that he can bring in here, I think the two big ones are two copies of Assemble Legion, a card that's very difficult for Crispy to remove, makes those Supreme Fairy Slow Terminus look very poor, and, you know, can just win the game straight up with that card. I don't think we have... Does Chris have a good way of getting those off of the table? Well, I do believe that Sylvan Primordial says non-creature, right? That's true, so that can't so blow it up. So we still can blow it up. All right, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, you're also going to find two copies of Dispel to be able to win that Sphinx's Revelation War. Uh, two copies of Detention Sphere from Josh, in case he wants to bring those in to take care of the aforementioned Sphinx's Primordials. And then he does have a copy of Angel Strandy along with Tuna Gates. So he can board into more counter magic, which looks very, very good against Chris's deck. Um, it's just about using the counter magic correctly, which I think he did yes. incorrectly that game. He just made that one blunder. He, did, yeah. he didn't want to go to 11. He wanted to get value. So I'm going to have to go back to Evan this week. I'm going to just be like, buddy, we saw Burden Haven win on camera. <laughs> At least a game. At, At least, least a, a game. game, yeah. It's going to be tough to power through this five-color control deck in 18 minutes, too. Yeah, I mean, time is certainly of the essence right now. It's something that I probably, I, you know, I bring up a little bit when I'm casting, sometimes sometimes too often, I would say. But, you know, time is something where now, you know, the first game took about 30 minutes, and neither of these decks win very quickly. No, especially, especially when you don't have Boros record in your deck. Especially if you don't have Sphinx's Revelation in your deck. Yeah. After, after Chris could potentially slaughter games it. Yeah. Um, I, I actually like the setup of Chris's deck in this matchup. Blue, White, Red has a difficult time dealing with unexpected um, decks. Like anything in the, any rogue deck in the format, he has a good angle because blue, white, red's uh, cards in the deck are low impact except for Sphinx's Revelations and just specifically targeting certain things that people are playing. Sure. Just attacking the metagame straight on. And, you know, obviously, Five Color Haven is not something that we've been expecting. Are you sure? I mean, yes. Okay. I'm 100% I'm sure. Bold, but I appreciate the boldness. As you see, Josh and Chris are going to be shuffling up here for game two. Yeah. If you are just joining us, Cedric Phillips, Brad Nelson here in the booth for you guys. Star City Games Open Series has made its trip on the way down to Orlando, Florida. Sunny, beautiful Orlando. If you guys do want to join in the conversation with us, at SCG Live, hashtag SCG ORL. You can join in and tweet with Brad and I. I got my phone with me. Brad, you got your phone with you? I do. You accepting all tweets right now? I haven't looked at it at all. All right. Well, we are taking I, all tweets. I am a professional, and I don't play. Well, I am not. And if you tweet <laughs> at me right now, I will look at it as I am checking my phone right now for tweets at all the time. I'm looking at a tweet right now. I think our can... Oh, three fours. You said Aurelia what was the best three four, I believe. What what is What do they have? Well... Mildy Vane, Mildy underscore Vane has, has a word for you. Arcanus the Omnipotent, hero, okay, of Bla fine. hero of Bladehold. That's really good. Restoration Angel. No. Wow. And Teferi, Mage of Zalfir. Okay, yeah, Teferi crushes it. 3-4. Couple 3-4s, boys. Do you know, okay. Whenever I'm doing commentary, yeah? I just want to boil some people at home. I just want them to be like, 
Check, 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 check. Yeah, you just want to get them revved up yeah. on the Twitter sphere? That's, uh, that's, that's fair. That's fair. It's people, fun. Can get, people can get revved up a little bit. And just say the wanna... most polarizing things. Just be like, yeah, I, that, that's the best thing on the planet. Yeah, if you want to put Brad in this place, it's not hard to do. Yes. Brad, your Twitter is, of course, FFF Freak. How many Fs? No, it's FF Freak. FF Freak, MTG. Yes. So if you want to, uh, if you want to, if you want to tweet with Brad, you can. You can you send can. me it's as not much hard to as do. you want. Yeah. Tell Brad how wrong he is about the three fours. Well, I mean, it's a fairy, man. Didn't you cast a fairy <laughs> back in the day? Yes, I've cast many to fairies. Fairy's thought. like my favorite creature of all time. Yeah, it's creature. like the most unfair card ever. Like, for someone that's never played with it, when you explain what that card did, it feels like cheating. It's like, all right, so once it's in play, your opponent can't cast anything except sorceries. Yeah. Counter spells can't go on the stack. And if you want, at the end of the turn, you can play creatures that they can't counter. And then you untap. It was one heck of a magic card. It was unfair. Yeah. I would like to see that card. I don't... I don't know what world that card would be worth like reprinting or anything. I wish, no, maybe I, was, I wish maybe it was like a little bit better in modern or something. That card was just. Do you know awesome. what they found out? That if you cast a card with haste that does something just on its own, people love it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I like that card a lot. Not much of a blue player, obviously, but to fair, I did play the old pickles deck a little while, and that card was in there. I, I tried to play Mystic Teachings, failed. Failed miserably. Really, no, I played a speed. lot of block teachings. It wasn't really for me. That was uh, I was I was more trying to beat Jerry than be with him then. Well, you've been doing that for years. Yeah, I've been trying to do it my How entire has that life. been working for you? Well, it's up and down. I have one lifetime win over Jerry's sanction to, like, seven losses. <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> whatever. It's fine. It's fine. I've accepted it. I've accepted that the decks that Crumble Jerry's plays, Jerry plays are the decks that I can't really beat. That's okay with me. <laughs> because there are other opponents besides Jerry Thompson in the world. Even though Jerry doesn't know that. <laughs> Alright, so Chris did go down to six, but we do see a Farzik. Uh, so hopefully his mana can develop. Um, Alright, yeah, there we go. That is a staff in that you cannot play on. Results. Two. So <laughs> we're going to have to fix that. And now, you know, Josh is working with a little more information right now. Because <laughs> he's going to write down <laughs> staff in it on a sheet of paper. It, it, it's like we're playing, uh, what, what's the saying? Uh, un unhinged. Yeah. It's coming. Yeah, it's Next, he should just start doing that. It's coming. It's coming. I promise. He's going to search for a hollow fountain. Josh's going to untap and draw. Cross fix revelation for the turn. And he's going to play a hollow fountain and just pass the turn back. All right. So on Chris's turn, he's going to want more acceleration. We do see an extra land, but does he have um, anything extremely powerful? I see a red, white. What is that card in his hand? It's it looks like a, a red white. Oh, it's slaughter games. We got a slaughter yeah, game. Yeah, we have slaughter games, please. We have slaughter games that we're far from casting. Shimmering Grotto will help. Shimmering would help, but I wonder why we went for that. Ooh. Oh, well, we're in Haven plus Shimmering Grotto. You know the old one-two punch. And that is, we got it. Yeah, the old one-two punch. It's easy to do now. And he gets two life. You guys call this card unplayable? I mean, it is. <laughs> we're gonna have to take a look at those set reviews, maybe <laughs> moving forward. We're gonna have to correct some things. We're going to have to get the Cedric Seal some people out to Roanoke now, as we're going to see Chris Dushraw casting Wolf Run for the turn. If you, if you jump on my turn, I will cut you. Wow, cut has been announced. <laughs> I don't want to take my I do my not want to bleed. <laughs> I do not want to bleed on or off camera. <laughs> as Chris is going to tap some mana here, he could cast that staff in, but it looks, right. like, it looks like we're going to see Slaughter Games, my friend. All right, this is the rule against control decks. Get the games. Like, that's yeah. what you have to do. You have to put that Slaughter Games into play. Take those Sphinx's Revelations before they just go Counterspell cast it for a couple. Uh, I'm surprised that Josh didn't... Ooh, he names, what? He names Counterflux. Brad, he disagrees with you, and I got a feeling that you disagree with him. Well, do you see the... Any, okay, we can go results-oriented if they can. Okay. He has two Sphinx's Revelations. <laughs> okay, if you want to be the results-oriented man, we can do that. We can go none and say Counterflux can't win the game on its own. Uh, and he showed you Counterflux and Rewind. So, like, it was just a coin flip. But, look at him, he's even I pulling the Sphinxes to, together, being like, I'm protecting my precious revelation. Because there's more webs than there are anything else, so. A little bit surprised with that name. Yeah. But now, we, I mean, yeah, we I mean, all threats have a green light now, for the most part. You know, he only has to worry about Essence Scatter and, uh, and the old rewind yeah, sound, so that's you know there's there's a lot of thinking. And there. we get to counter the um, the enchantment with our primordial in hand. Yeah, get to and take care of the assemble legion. And we get a forest. Yeah. 
Uh, but yeah, those those sphinxes in hand are going to be very good. I was even surprised. Well, I was shocked that Josh didn't actually just respond to the solder games with sphinx for one. Yeah, so cycling one of them. Yeah, I'm I mean, what's, what too. does he want to? He's like, all right, my opponent was at 40 last game. I got to start the beats now. I guess that is a good decision. That one card's probably not going to do anything where... Oh, he's just going to think he's twice. He's going to flashback, think twice. He's going to get himself a new card, draw Sulphur Falls. Draws an island for the turn. Let's see if he's if he's willing to slam down the Assemble Legion on the main phase right now. I mean, if you board it in, you got to slam it, right? And, and he's, you see him counting the mana for Chris, and he's saying, okay, well, Sulphur Primordial is pretty annoying. And he is just going to slam it down and dare Chris to have we it. We need a land. Come on, Chris. We need a land. That! He draws. I don't know. Don't slow roll us. Is yes. It in yes. So will he cast it or will he take the time to get Staff of Nin into play? Oh, no. You, 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 you. He just, he has perfect information. There's an Essence Scatter in play. Well, there's an Essence Scatter in hand. Yeah. We have perfect information. Let's Six, cast seven, a fatty. Bang. Silver Primordial takes care of the Assemble the Legion, and he does even get to search up a forest now. He'll search for a Temple Garden and pass the turn back. So Assemble the Legion bites the dust. Do, 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 do. Another enchantment <laughs> bites the dust. Oh, man. And now we've got a 6 eight reach. That Restoration Agent's not going to do anything. We do have an Angel of Serenity that can come down, but I don't think you want to put a Sylvan underneath that. Probably not, as he's just going to play Glacial Fortress and pass the turn back. So Chris does have a 6 eight that's looking to attack here. Yeah, I don't think Josh wrote it up dealing with the 6-8s. I think he didn't want them to resolve. Yeah, that would be the plan, yeah. yeah so he was hoping that Chris just didn't have one or didn't have the 7th land or what have you. But he had them both, and here comes Sylvan Primordial into the red zone. Didn't think I'd be saying that on cast today. Yeah, I also did not think that I was going to see Shimmer and Grotto cast a, a Slaughter Games. <laughs> but, like, that's what happens at these tournaments. They're awesome. So now we see Chris tapping some mana here. Maybe it is tap of in time. Yes. And it is. Is that going to resolve? Laysai. Josh Martinez looks like he's in a he's lot gonna, of trouble right now. Is he just right going to draw one, try to hit that negate? Well, the staff resolves. Chris plays a Temple Guard, and he does pass the turn back. All right, Josh, you are in a sticky situation that you probably did not draw up before you came to this tournament. Staffing in, Sylvan Primordial. Oh, yeah. Before the tournament, you're like, all right, hypothetical. If your opponent tags with Sylvan Primordial and just plays Staffing in, what do you do? And they're like, what? What yeah. round is this, round one? Yeah, what hypothetical <laughs> are you in? Am, am How I in, old is my opponent? <laughs> yeah, am I an eight-man side of that? No, you're under camera. Uh, 2-0, oh, down a game. <laughs> <laughs> taking one, yeah. Now. now you're taking one from Staffing in. Chris is going to untap. He's going to draw not one, but two cards. He was so confident it was going to resolve, he just showed it to you on turn two. It didn't matter. Yeah, Sun Petal Grove, and I think the Fire Drown Yard is the other card that's drawn here for Chris. And here comes Santa Claus. Here comes Santa <laughs> Claus right down Santa Claus Lane. Oh, wow. Oh, don't stop. And that's the only that. part of the lyrics I know. I don't know the song very well. It's not poppy enough. Donson and Dixon and all his rain. Those rain aren't names of reindeer. I don't know them. <laughs> I didn't start the song. You're better sir. off just not guessing. No, the guy said Dodson and Dixon. And Dixon? <laughs> How about Verdon <laughs> Haven? How about that? Well, act like that never happened. As Verdon Haven's going to go on the Temple Garden, Chris is going to gain two more life, and we'll see if Santa Claus is going to come down Santa Claus later. Is he scared of the Azorius charm? Can't what? Play, can't well, play what scared are you now. Doing? Well, I wouldn't pump first. He does pump first. Wow. And he just takes it. Wow, Wait, no. is that, oh, which is that? What do the fuck? All right, we're at two. All right, revelation. All right, we're back up to six. We got to find an answer. I mean, what's the card you cut in this matchup? Azuri's Charm. Like, I don't think, I would not play around that. So, revelation for four by Josh. Josh draws a card. He draws <laughs> Sulfur Falls. <laughs> oh, we know He's we have Angel. His head. We need Angel, but like, poke, poke with well, I mean, Wolf Run gives Trample. Well, yeah, no, he has Angel Serenity. Okay, okay. That has to take care of it this turn. And we do have that Staff of Nim, so that also can just deal lethal damage here. Angel Serrani humps that, so that's going to eat that. Is he going to eat his own Restoration Why? Angel? Oh, just play around Supreme Verdict? Yeah. Nah, you want like he's damage. not going to. He's going to pass the turn back. Staff is going to ping Josh at the end of turn. And Brad, I think the last card in Chris's hand is Bonfire of the Dam. No way! And if that is the case, is Chris going to draw one card? He draws a second card. And that is a red, that is a red You see him counting his the mana. That is a red card. Silver Primordial. 
Ah! Just can't get it out. Rod ah! the Dam and a hand is being extended. Chris Galliano, Brian Color Haven, take that Evan Irwin, take that Fred Nelson. Burton Haven can get the job done. And just win. He wins 2 0 over Josh Martinez playing blue, white, red, flash. Bang yourself down, boys and girls, because it is hot in here. Bonfire the dam, take it down. That is that is beautiful to see. Um, I don't know. I don't know. The thing is sweet. Like I, the the only thing I want to complain about is yeah, the, some of the sideboard cards and not having cavern. But like the general idea of this deck, I think this could be something. Like it's big sweet. mana. I was wondering if we were gonna see big mana decks. We've seen omniscient decks. We've seen you know. Uh, uh, what is that double tutor? Increasing ambition, I believe the name of it is. Yes. Um, you know, we've seen decks like that in the past from Ali Antrazi or Travis Lewis of the World trying to go super over the top of the opponent. And this is just another deck that kind of fits in that wheelhouse of just trying to go big as fast as you can. I think this Bird is the biggest you want to get to. Yeah. Like, you can't go to 